Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss about how to remember anatomy of scalp in brief and for that you need to remember rule of 5 just because for the anatomy of scalp so many things are in number of 5 so let's see first how the rule applies to the scalp so as you know the spelling of scalp itself is S-C-A-L-P made up of 5 letters and so as the layers so there are five layers you need to remember regarding the scalp first is the skin then comes cutaneous tissue or subcutaneous tissue then comes a that is aponeurosis or gallia aponeurotica then fourth comes is the loose areolar tissue and fifth is pericranium now the first layer skin is very thick hairy and it is having rich sebaceous glands the second layer is having dense fibrous connective tissue with uh, locules containing fat and blood vessels and nerves are traversing through this layer to reach to the skin. The third layer is Gallia aponeurotica containing occipital frontalis muscle containing two bellies of frontal belly and two bellies of occipital belly of occipital frontalis. The fourth layer is loose areolar tissue containing dead space and that is traversed by emissary veins which is connecting the soft tissue of scalp to the intracranial venous sinuses. And fifth layer is nothing but periosteum of the bones of the vault. So that is pericranium and that is firmly adherent to the sutures. So this is how you can remember layers of the scalp via remembering the spelling of the scalp s c a l p so for five layers you need to remember this spelling only next is arterial supply again you need to remember rule of five so this is superior view of the scalp and this is anterior this is posterior aspect and this line is dividing the scalp into two halves left and right so each half is supplied by five arteries three in front of the level of the ear and two behind namely supraorbital supratrochlear superficial temporal posterior auricular and occipital artery so five arteries on each half are supplying the scalp out of this these first two are branches of internal carotid and these three are branches of external carotid so we can say that across the midline of the scalp there is a free anastomosis between branches of internal carotid and external carotid similar like arterial supply the venous drainage is also having a rule of five so again uh, similar named veins supraorbital supratrochlear superficial temporal posterior auricular and occipital veins are carrying blood from each half three in front and two behind the ear so like five veins on either half or each half are carrying blood next is now supply again you need to remember rule of five so similar diagram superior view of the scalp anterior and posterior aspect and these are the two halves left and right now again at the level of ear you need to imagine uh, another plane so there will be four quadrant and each quadrant right and left anterior and posterior will be having five nerves out of five nerves four are sensory and one motor so total 20 nerves five multiplied by four are supplying the scalp so again you need to remember the rule of five five in each quadrant so five nerves in front of the plane of ear will be four sensory and one motor the four sensory are supraorbital and supratrochlear they are branches of ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve third is zygomatico temporal that is a branch of maxillary and fourth is auricular temporal that is a branch of mandibular so these are four sensory nerve and one motor will be temporal branch of facial nerve so these five nerves will be supplying the scalp in front of the ear the remaining five nerves behind the ear in each half or each quarter will be four sensory and one motor again so four sensory are great auricular lesser occipital greater occipital and third occipital now the great auricular and lesser occipital are coming from cervical plexus they are ventral primary rami whereas the greater occipital and third occipital are coming from dorsal primary rami c2 and c3 respectively similarly one motor in each quadrant that is posterior auricular branch of facial now so likewise you can again remember rule of five to know the nerve supply of the scalp then comes applied anatomy again you need to remember rule of five so five layers s c a l p skin subcutaneous tissue aponeurosis loose areolar tissue and pericranium 
so first comes the skin and as we have discussed it is having thick and hairy skin plus there are so many sebaceous glands so it is likely or it is vulnerable for having sebaceous cyst second layer is dense fibrous tissue or connective tissue and uh, that is having rich blood vessels and now supply so once there is a cut the dense fibrous tissue won't let the arteries to collapse and that will lead to profuse bleeding and if there is an accumulation of fluid the fluid will not be able to expand because there are so many fibrous septa and that will lead to intractable pain into this layer third layer is having gallia apneurotica two frontal belly and two occipital belly and they are anteroposteriorly oriented so if there is a wound or incision in anteroposterior direction then the wound won't gape but if it is across the long axis of the gallia apneurotica then the wounds will tend to gape so collectively these three layers first second and third layer they are fixed to each other they do not separate and they are collectively termed as surgical layer of the scalp the fourth layer is having loose areolar tissue and so as the uh, in inflammation or the pus or the fluid can easily spread and particularly as we have discussed it is having multiple emissary veins and these veins will communicate intracranial venous sinuses to the soft tissue of the scalp and so as the infection from this fourth layer or from the scalp via emissary vein can enter into the intracranial venous sinuses and so as this layer is also termed as dangerous layer of the scalp similarly as it is a loose areolar tissue so blood or fluid can easily spread throughout the fourth layer and that can reach to the subcutaneous tissue or around the eyelid and that can discolorate the eyelid brownish or black in color and that condition is then termed as black eye secondary to the hemorrhage or collection of the blood in the fourth layer and fifth layer is pericranium and that is nothing but periosteum so if there is a blood or fluid collects underneath the fifth layer between bone and the pericranium or periosteum as we have discussed it will be it is fixed so it won't allow the fluid to expand beyond the sutures and the swelling will assume a shape of the bone where the fluid is collected and that condition is termed as cephalohematoma uh, similar such conditions like uh, safety valve hematoma or caput saccadinum are also there but these are the main five applied anatomy you need to remember regarding scalp the only exception you need to remember for the anatomy of scalp is its lymphatic drainage where in front of the ear the lymphatic drain to the preauricular or parotid group of lymph nodes and lymph behind the ear will drain to posteroricular or mastoid and occipital group of lymph nodes so here only three sets of lymph nodes are there in on either side so this is the exception so this is regarding quick recap of anatomy of the scalp hope you have understood well thanks for watching